Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Scale Up Radio, the podcast inspired by the entrepreneurial scale up system and designed to make navigating our scale up journeys that little bit easier by learning from others' experiences. I'm Kevin Brent, and this week on the show, I'm joined by Alexei Lobato, the founder and creative director of Flying Duck Studio Lab. And Alexei shares key insights on the studio's successes, driven by a purpose driven mission focused on ethics and social impact. We discuss Discover how Elixir prioritizes team attitude over technical skills and the valuable lessons learned from past business challenges, emphasizing the importance of legal protections and operational finesse. So from founding Flying Duck Studio Lab with just four part-time members to envisioning scalable digital products and brand growth, Elixir provides her roadmap for success. And make sure you don't miss any future episodes of Scale Up Radio by subscribing to Scallop Radio wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. And you can also nominate a guest for Scallop Radio if you know someone with an interesting scale-up story. And you can find out how in the show notes. So listen on for now for a dynamic discussion on ethical entrepreneurships, hiring philosophies, and the exciting future of Flying Duck Studio Lab. Welcome to another episode of Skelet Radio. I'm delighted today to be joined by Alexei Lobato of uh, Flying Duck Studio Lab. So Alexei is the founder and creative director. So welcome to Skelet Radio. Thank you so much for the invitation, Kevin. Oh, that's fantastic. So Flying Duck Studio Lab, what's what's that all about? What what do you do? <clears throat> it is, it's a creative studio. Uh, an ethical and inclusive creative studio and basically uh, we are focusing design and animation but there is a reason be- behind why we don't say that this animation studio is because it's, mo- it's, it's broader so we do also like uh, videos uh, branding so all sort of like different uh, products so we have a uh, growth mind so that's why we don't want to limit in what we do uh, but more in the way of doing things. That's why it's an ethical and inclusive, and is the main purpose of the of the studio is going in that in that route. Um, and when you say ethical and, and and inclusive, what what sort of things do you live by then? To <clears throat> so it's it, it's basically everything. So from the the easy way for people to understand if they if they know a little bit what it's a big corp. So we are a big yeah. corp. Yeah. Um, for those that they don't know, B Corp is a um, is a standard that you need to follow um, with very tricky uh, assessment uh, for for all the areas in a company. And and it was really good for us because it kind of gave us the the startup point in how to measure how we are ethical. And it's from the type of uh, projects that we take. Um, it could be some sort of like social impact, uh, but also the ways that we work with clients. And um, examples of those, for example, is uh, last year we did a, a job for um, Open University for the BBC that it was talking about consumerism and phones. Um, we help also with a video for a rehab center. So it's basically stories that they are uh, meaningful. So we are working in a couple of documentaries. So documentaries is also a, a specialty that we have. Okay. And, and, and because it's focused in, in like more learning or bringing awareness in a specific subject. And then uh, the way that we work with freelancers and with people internally in the studio. So the ethicality touch basically all the aspects of the studio. And we do like pro bono, low bono work. We help communities. So a lot of different (laughs) things. Very good. Yeah, Mm. very good. And, And what sort of, can you give us an idea of the scale of the business? You know, where are you on your scale up? journey um so is the second we didn't hit the second year of the business okay so yeah um uh, the amount of people is we are like uh, four people uh no all of them they are full time so it's quite small uh in that sense but uh, we have a lot of like partnerships with different companies uh, so when we need to offer 
like a, okay. a bigger package uh, we can we can handle it uh, in 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 house yeah. so that's really good it's like it's, it's kind of like creating a collective um we do have in our website uh, the name of collective so we have a lot of uh, small companies and freelancers that they are very very close to the studio and they are part of the family brilliant so you must have decided right at the beginning to go for the b corp um, yeah, yeah, because that 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 can take well over a year, can't it? To to, to get that yeah. through. Yeah. So we the first year we got the pending uh, because we were less than a year, and now this year we are starting to apply to the to the like yeah the, the, the bigger one. <laughs> Very good. So, <laughs> what's the marketplace like really for you in terms of your competitors, and you know how are you how are you different. The USP, the unique selling point, uh, basically is the the ethos of the company. That's for sure. But apart from that, we really push the innovation aspect. So we are experimenting a lot with like AI uh, okay. workflows, integrating AI uh, in creative. I'm 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 giving some talks uh, as well to different uh, so business startups, but also like producers in development. So you know like telling them, teaching them a little bit uh, how to implement AI because we are very experienced in how to do it internally ourselves. Okay. Can you give us an example of what sort of things you use AI for? Um, uh, basically, I think like every day I'm using it. So right now I'm doing a job. Um, I need to rotoscope. I need to uh, in-paint, uh, remove BFX. So for BFX, is really good um, for creativity. So one project that we have is uh, researching 3D workflow. So creating a, the challenge is creating a 3D character from scratch yep. um, using AI in all the steps possible. Uh, read that character using AI and then transfer into Blender uh, and then uh, applying a motion tracking system. So basically recording ourselves doing some silly movements yeah. and apply that to the character using uh, also AI tools. So so yeah, but it could be also for like texturing. So it's it's not we it's not like we do everything with AI. We use AI to support our yes. work and make us more efficient. But but also in, in writing as well. So I have to write an email to a client. Um, and sometimes, you know, because I'm foreigner, so my English is not perfect, or I can maybe sound too abrupt or too direct, so trying to yeah. make it friendlier. So yeah, in every tiny thing. So it's basically all around. Very good. Excellent. And and how does do you do anything different with your business model? Do you charge by projects, by the hour sort of thing? Or how, what do you do from a... Yeah, so we we have a, like products that they are a fixed price and okay. they have some conditions. Um, uh, then we, when a project comes, we also do a quote if the project is a little bit more complex. So for example, we have a explainer package that is very low in the price, okay? It's, it's very low, but is a no amends policy. So it means that uh, you trust us, we have a meeting with you, we are really good in what we do, okay? But we offer the possibility of uh, having amends uh, on top of the of the price of the of the budget. Um so it's is ways of uh, keeping cost down Mm. integrating the client in the decisions so that's one way then we have a day rate as well so it depends usually they is more like prices by project but we offer day rate as well so depending right. the type of the project um, and if it's like for educative purpose or charities we have discounts so yeah it's, it's yeah we are very adaptable to the type of project and to the type of client yeah, and I and I and I and I like that a lot because with service service industries, it's quite yeah. difficult to 
to control and avoid scope creep and all of those things, isn't it? So it sounds like what you've done is you've gone part way to almost productizing some of some of your offerings and saying, all right, this is how it's going to work. And yeah. this is what's included. And this is what it's not included mm -hmm. and therefore if, if amends are not included then they're charged for separately and avoiding that okay well actually we quite liked it but could we just change the color of that bit and all, all of those all of those things but they put their trust yeah. in you and they know what exactly yeah. i mean normally we perfect so if it's a tiny amen or things like that it's, it's okay but it's also to save war a little bit the quality and the time scale and 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 everything but like i say is we see each project and we help the clients also to uh, advise them the best way um usually we try to have a budget in advance from the clients because that help us to decide the technique and the style that we can uh, pitch on them yes. so because it's not the same like doing a 3d job that doing a more like 2d simplify yeah um yeah very good and and who would your you know what's your ideal project ideal customer so that is really like a tricky question because um we do have a target audience which is mostly startups and production companies but then we kind of are open to a many different uh, type of clients. It's like usually the clients that they approach us are like um, small, medium uh, clients. We have not clients that they are quite big, like Netflix, Discovery Channel, but normally through an intermediary, like a production house. Okay. Um, we have some clients that they are a little bit uh, bigger and they are most coming from my my previous experience when I was working at London and I was working in a lot of like production houses and production companies. Um, but yeah, so we, we also, uh, because we established the business here in the north, um, but we work internationally. So we have international clients from US, um, other parts, uh, Spain, uh, I'm Spanish. Uh, mm -hmm. But then uh, we work in advertising the business uh, regionally, locally as well, and try to fill the gap of uh, offering premium content to business that they might not be able to afford these big studios in London or US. Yeah. But we do have the expertise that they have. Yeah, very good. And and what what got you to the point of establishing Flying Duck Studio Lab then? So it sounds like um, you came over from Spain at some point, worked in London. So you know, t t tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I, I've been working uh, in Spain. I was working in the industry uh, since almost the beginning, like six, seven years at Nintendo. That was okay. kind of like my last uh, adventure there. Then I become freelancer for one year, and then I just moved to London. And straight away, the third day I arrived, I had a job in a studio in a post house in in Soho. So I started to work. Um, yeah, that was like another six years uh, in London, and then. Uh, before the pandemic, I moved to the north. The north. Uh, the reason why I decided to establish the business, it was uh, something that probably a lot of people can relate, is uh, feeling soulless. Like, I love my job. I didn't like for who I was doing it. Right. The products that I was, uh, I, mostly I was working in advertising, advertising and, and documentaries. The documentary part, I really like it, but the advertising, even I like the technical challenge, is like selling products that I don't even buy because yep. I don't believe in, in them. Yeah. So yeah. I was lacking that purpose. Um, in life and I thought that I really wanted to feel like I had some value in society um, so that was really like the beginning then I built another studio it didn't go well for as you mentioned in some of uh, your advices like it's good to talk about the failures yeah um, so this was a failure but not really consider it as a failure because the learning uh, that I got, it was so massive that, um, I mean, it kind of 
made it worth it. Uh, even <laughs> was a really, really, really tough time. Wow. It was building a business with a friend, things they didn't go well. So it was about learning a lot about like IP, intellectual property, um, copywriting and, and how to do things better, how to protect yourself. Um, and now I think the second one is a, a success in those terms and it's going well. Um, it's still early days, but, yeah. but has potential. Good. Yeah, good. So, you know, I don't, I don't wish to open up any old, wounds particularly but what what um what what did you learn what did you take away then from that previous experience so um writing everything uh, even if it's with friends um and keep things clear who was doing what who you know like having all these things uh, read in your mind and it's not about like who can you partner with uh because you love them or you trust them is like, are they going to be useful for the business? Are they going to uh, do their part? So you need to understand that that's, uh, yeah. So having silence uh, business partner is not really a good thing. So you need to be more or less in the same page. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah very good. And as, and as you say, document, document it, make sure you've, you've got the agreements um yeah okay good so so take us through to then um starting up flying duck uh yeah and then it's like basically my team uh we move um so yeah we, we move everything that we could move to the new studio uh, the idea was the same the principles was the same so the ethos was the same we did change quite a lot because the mindset, it was different. Our willingness to grow was different. Our willingness to approach new challenges. Uh, so that's when we start straight away working on the B Corp and working on policies and having all the foundations um, ready in the, in the studio for when we grow, we have already very clear all that paperwork, but it's not just paperwork. It's, it's our our like mission and values, yes, and we understand what we want. It's right at the core of everything you do, and <laughs> and you know I yeah. I can hear from what you were saying earlier on about feeling it was a bit soulless and not having a purpose where you were before. You know that's that's what's mm. driving you, and 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 it's great that. It's great that we can see that that's happened right from the start. So it wasn't something that you yeah. thought, you know, two years into the business, oh, maybe we should do Beacon. No. It was like, you know, this is what we're about. Let's start off this way. Yeah, even more like uh, the the workers, so the two people that they are with me more uh, constant, um, they wrote the contracts for the employees. So they wrote their own contract. Okay. So, Things, things like that, and I'm really proud of, of you know, they they grow what they f feel that is fair. Yeah. Obviously, researching all the information of legalities, like talking with lawyers and and everything. But yeah, so yeah. that's how much we involve everybody. Yeah, very good. And 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 I know we were talking talking earlier before we started recording. You you were a winner at the Great British Entrepreneur Awards, and I know there's a bit of a story around that. But but what 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 was the category that you that you won? Creative Business of the Year. Brilliant. And yeah. and did they give you any feedback? Do you know what it was that really made you stand out for them? No, no, not really. Okay. But. We have been lucky because uh, in the short period of time that we were uh, up and running, um, we won a couple of uh, awards. We won the Great British Entrepreneur, and then we won the Rising uh, Startup of the Year as well. Mm -hmm. So so that kind of confirmed that yeah. the idea behind the business and what we do, um, it has potential because uh, it kind of like click with the public, with the audience. Apart from that, we were like uh, selected uh, among a lot of different programs 
um, if I have to give an advice uh, to people that they want to um, build a business um, is go to these accelerator programs, uh, apply for all of them, okay. look in your region, because you have a lot of um, uh, support and advice uh, for like complement your lacking areas. In my in my case, my my lacking uh, area was uh, operations, finance, all of that. Uh, so I yeah I learned with few years. <laughs> Great. So you you were on one of the accelerator programs then locally? Yeah, we were selected by Creative England uh, with yeah. uh, 14 among the, like the four, 14, they choose like 14 uh, companies in the UK run by female. So okay. we were one of them. Then uh, NatWest Purpose Led a uh, couple of years in a row with them as well. So we have their support. Um, Adventure, which is a regional program in Leeds, um, we were selected with them as well, and and we got a grant uh, from them as well. Um, so so yeah, like yeah, the Weekend as well, which is a program that supports like female entrepreneurs uh, in in Leeds uh, okay. region. Yeah. Um, and I did um, for free like a course in 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 coaching which is uh, something that is not really related with my skills, but it really helped me um, a lot in how to approach communication with clients, with workers, yeah. co-workers. Mm. Yeah, so always always, be, yeah, be willing to recognize where your shortcomings might be and, and not be afraid to to learn and, and, and to learn from others. But, and I'd echo, I'd echo that. Certainly within the UK, there's lots of really good support. There's, yeah. there's both, uh, yeah, whether it be accelerator type things, whether it be grant funded programs, but there's a lot of things locally. And if people yeah. reach out to their growth hubs, um, then, exactly. then they'll find access to those sort of things. The grants are a little bit trickier to <laughs> to access, but the support and and business accelerator programs and advisors that's quite there is quite a lot uh, landscape in that area. Yeah, good. So just going back to the Great British Entrepreneur Award because I know there's a bit of a story. You you unfortunately weren't able to collect the award, were you yourself? Yeah, I was coming back from a, like a tech conference in Lisbon, so it was like a full week of um, uh, nerds and techie people <laughs> talking about uh, our stuff. Uh, AI monopolized the whole uh, conference. So I just came from Lisbon to London with the only purpose of like going to the to the ceremony. Um and I arrive, I start to feel really ill and suddenly I had COVID. Yeah. I tested for COVID. So then it was like, oh my God, I cannot go. And then somebody um uh, texts me that night uh, through LinkedIn. Um uh, letting me know that we we won. Yeah. And it was a random person, a stranger. I didn't oh. have in my contacts, but they they told me that they were sit on my table, oh. and and they wanted to let me know that uh, I won. And I just told them like, so I'm so sorry for not being there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having COVID. Yeah. yeah, such a such a shame. So such a great thing to to have won, and then such a shame not to be able to actually go up on stage and and collect the award yourself. But yes. <laughs> Yes, oh, yes. Good. Okay. So, so, um, what have you, you know, you've, you've, you've set the business up just after, just after COVID, I guess, actually, if it was a couple of, couple of years, a couple of years ago, you know, what, what have been some of the key milestones, the key things that you've learned during, during these two years? I mean, the, the, the most important things I think is the importance of uh, being organized and having a purpose and having some goals, and, but being flexible as well, understanding uh, what is the idea of your business that helps you to be focused, that help you to like get rid of all the noise and and no, no feeling uh, stress too much <laughs> yeah. maybe there is no so much work coming and 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 you feel like oh my god what should i because you know if you maintain and you keep consistency there things they start to 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 happen so it's patient i think is one of the keys having patience yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, yeah, so. It's not an easy task. Being a business owner is not easy. It's quite lonely. Um, so there is a lot of things that um, right now, if somebody tell me all those things at the beginning, I'm not sure if I was building a business uh, again. Uh, but now that it's done. And yeah. now that I started, uh, I don't regret because the amount of learning and preparation that I have for life <laughs> yeah. is, you know, yeah, it will not disappear. Yeah, I, I think I think there's a lot in that, isn't it? If it were to to be an entrepreneur, you've got to have all sorts of qualities and desires and and and, and attitudes. To a certain extent, you've also probably we're probably all a little bit naive because if we could if we could actually see all of the hard work <laughs> that's going to be required, um, yeah. I think you're right. If we knew all of that at the beginning, you'd look at it and 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 you'd and probably probably not doing it for very much money as well. <laughs> Certainly yeah, to start and with. without any any investment, which yeah, is something right. that's. Uh, you know, some business, they are um, lucky or they decide to start with like some sort of support uh, investment. And that's kind of easy in that sense. You lose a little bit of control, which is something I didn't want to lose control. Also, understanding that the valuation of the company in a service company uh, at the beginning uh, is not really worth it to enter in the investment world. It's yeah. better when you have your business a little bit more established and you understand your numbers, you understand your traction, you understand your growth, and it's, it's easy to, to sell it. To, to investors because that's another landscape <laughs> tricky to work <laughs> so is that is that something that you're aiming towards are you are you looking to get an investor or potentially exit at some point uh, yes yes um, there is few things to consider so one of them is like I want to like put the business in a position uh, that is not just by service so I want to develop like a couple of projects I have a couple of ideas in mind so I want to like grow this uh, business in some way that um, yeah it, it, it's, it has more stream revenues than just the service uh, path um, so that will benefit in that sense uh, exit um, I do see myself uh, exit um, it will be a sad moment because it's something so this is my baby mm. I'm not sure if I want to be like you know like more than X amount of years uh, working on this uh, I do love challenge so for me is I want to make this successful and then I will um, assess the situation maybe I start another adventure yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what sort of things do you think? Um, you mentioned it's 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 service companies. Um, it's sometimes hard, especially at the beginning, to get get investment. So, what sort of things do you think are going to make the business as valuable as possible that that you might need to consider as you grow? So, when you have a product that is uh, scalable, so that so have this relationship with tech is something that is, is is better in those terms. So basically right now, um, the value of uh, our company is more the the brand, the name, So which is what I'm growing at the moment as well. So when the company is established and it has a name and it has attraction, that's something that is attractive also for bigger, bigger companies or... Mm or investors yeah. or having an scalable product that it can generate growth and revenue. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And and when you when you talk about scalable, do you do you have a particular definition of what you what what scalable means to you? Yes, we we want to like uh, develop um, some products that uh, we can sell online. Right. For example, so from apps to courses, things like that. So we are like teaching is something that it was always with me. I study, uh, well, I study a university degree in media, but then a master in like literature and and okay. and grammar. Uh, but I was like teaching 
um, during my life, uh, probably non-stop in different areas from like theater to Latin <laughs> to okay. After Effects uh, to yeah. animation to AI. Yeah. So so that's something that I I, I really enjoy and I really like. Okay. Um, and then creating products that they so we are working right now in a product that hopefully we can standardize and we can sell to other uh, companies and startups to optimize process. Yeah. I Very cannot good. reveal too much at the moment. No, no, that's absolutely fine. And it's interesting as well. You talk about the the education side of things. You know, you you and you you mentioned earlier <laughs> that one of the courses you did was coaching, and that it wasn't that relevant. But actually, clearly, it's all mm-hmm. part of the big picture, isn't it? For you, is um, yeah, is, is, yeah, is good. And and when you set the business up, was it? Did, are you the sole founder? Or, or... yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it was after the experience that I have previously. Um, I didn't want to risk it, so I have a clear vision of what I wanted to do, and and I just I just did it. I'm not close to the idea to have a partner in the future, uh, but under certain uh, uh, circumstances and under certain conditions of like the alignment in the mission and what it, that person brings to the company. Um, yeah. And how easy is to deal. So yeah, I like easy people. <laughs> yeah. I like no ego. And, and so we have that policy in, in the company, like no ego. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. So um, I value more the attitudes. So even for like when I have to hire people, um, obviously don't get me wrong. I like talent and I try to have a higher standard in everything that we do, but everything can be learned in the technical aspect and, and I can teach my team. Mm-hmm. So I value more the attitude about, you know, being easygoing, nice to work with and that you can tell them uh, the things that you need, uh, even if it sometimes is like, oh, you will improve in this area without people taking personally. Um, and I'm feeling really proud that I think like my team is is happy uh, with me. Excellent. And how do you? Is that that's it's quite difficult for us as entrepreneurs, the business owners, to get the recruitment right and to you know, find people that do have that right attitude. What what? How do you go about? Uh, is where do you find them for me like uh, the interview understanding a little bit their personality i think i can read quite well to people um and i do test at the beginning so so i test people i see how they are challenging you know they how they are behaving with like different challenges okay. and how they react in different um, uh, circumstances and i follow a little bit intuition to be honest because yeah like i say i kind of like have a nice sense of yeah spotting good and do you have any favorite questions that you like to ask people that um that you find get to what you want <clears throat> i like to ask them uh, about their personal life and their hobbies because that kind of tells a lot about 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 them and in the future when we grow and we have to hire more people um there is this uh, personality test that i find quite uh, uh, revealing about people as well um we also try to include be really inclusive so um um, we are not hiring right now, but like looking at neurodiverse people also is interesting because they have some skills. Yes, they are very good researchers. So it's it's understanding what do you want and what do you expect from 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 someone. But uh, yeah, for me the most important part is to have an open conversation and see how they face. Um, um, I, I don't know how to say it. Um, feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
because as a business owner with no a lot of time, I really need to be on point and tell feedback. So it's not it's not nothing personal. It's just for the sake of the business and trying to to improve uh, overall the whole. So it's not like a mad or anything like that. But yeah, but yeah, and that's in at the moment is working uh, quite well. Very good, thank you. And you mentioned time there we're all busy as entrepreneurs how do you how do you manage your time how do you make sure you're managing it effectively um i did a long time a, a lot of journaling so i create like habits uh, that now move into the digital area so i'm not journaling on paper uh, anymore which i miss a little bit uh, but i do have an amazing uh, ecosystem uh, tracking a uh, task to-do list, uh, blocking time on my calendar, uh, blocking time to personal development board, blocking time to, so I have a color coding. So the things that they can be moved, I move them if uh -huh. I need to. There is other things that they cannot be moved, so have a specific color. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to like, for example, free Mondays from meetings that they are not completely uh, fundamental. So if something can be moved to Tuesday and I have a specific day, Friday is my admin day. I, I do work, but you know, if I don't have like client work or something like that, Friday is my admin day. Yeah. Um, things like that. I try to don't, uh, I rather work a little bit over time during the week than working on the weekend. Um, sometimes it's unavoidable, but, but yeah, I'm trying to like, have also moments of quiet time for for me even being workaholic i really like my work yeah. but but i also understand the benefits of disconnect yeah. sometimes great so so yeah so nice i like the idea of color coding your diary so blocking out um times in the day for specific things but color coding them as well is a nice nice little touch um yeah very good and and, and what what would what would you say you've got right then um with with flying duck you know that so so far you know what what if what do you think yeah that's that's why we're doing okay I've got, we got that right i mean i think having a business that is less than two years and doesn't have losses i think for me that's a success yeah um even i'm not earning what i should be earning but still um having the amount of traction uh, the amount of good feedback uh, that i have uh, and i'm not a social media person i do have uh, i mean i do understand about social media i don't like it <laughs> yeah. but i do understand the benefits uh, but that's one of the reasons that uh, i have someone in my team that is more focusing in that okay. aspect so free my, myself a little bit um and having that feeling that you open you know before we were talking about the square lens alliance which is uh, this initiative that i started uh, with a couple of colleagues uh, of creating a uh, half here in the north of created people uh, business and freelancers that they are related in some way with uh, media and screen yeah. um and Two meetings. The first meeting was around like 20, someone, 23 or 20 something, something people. The second one was uh, 38, 39. Right. So those type of things, I feel them as we yeah. are going in a good path. Earning awards as well. I feel that that's part of being recognized. So yeah having the external recognition outside being how people they react when i give a talk um i'm not an extrovert person i'm quite shy but i train myself in being able to speak in public and when i'm passionate about what i'm talking uh, and then i feel people coming to me and asking me questions um that's that's an amazing feeling brilliant very good, and that that sounds like you. Yeah, it sounds like you really love that part of the part of what you do. And, yeah, and and, and, and happy you, clients and as happy well. Happy clients, yeah, yeah. Happy clients. Yeah. And, That's also and, how I feel proud, and I can measure their success. Yeah, great. 
And if you were to look back on the last couple of years, you know what what could you have done better? Do you think, or what 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 mistakes, if any, did you make? Um, what mistakes apart from uh, checking all the legalities and covering and and write that out? That I think probably that's like a massive learning yeah. um, in a bad way you know, but with bad experience, but really, really massive learning and it helped me. So right now we have the decks when we present a deck to a client or anything. So we have a last page that protect the deck and the copyright mm -hmm. is something, you know, little tricks that I learned uh, through those type of experience. Um, I will say that probably that's the bigger one of yeah. the yeah. the learnings and and then the other one you will say that i mentioned uh, that sometimes this connection is important and i think one of my flaws is that being workaholic sometimes i forget that i need to drink <laughs> yeah. i need to go for a walk i need to do those things so I I will probably like keep pushing that because yeah I think I need a more constant reminder. Yeah, good. Mm. And, and, yeah, and, and we talked a little bit along these lines. But what's the you know you've got a very purpose driven driven business. You know what's the legacy that you want to want to leave? You know what are you what are you trying to do with Flying Duck? I would like like other businesses they look at our business and they say we want to be like them. Right. So yeah. that's that's my my main purpose is to set an example, and and tell other people that uh, having an ethical and profitable business is possible. Brilliant, good. And by the way, is there a story behind the name Flying Duck? Uh, is it? Yeah, the previous studio it was called Fed Up Studio Lab. And and the logo was also like a duck. So with this one, when we have to move, obviously we couldn't use the branding, we couldn't use anything from, from the previous one. But like I say, so it, it, it had it, it had me, which I was a big part of the studio and the rest of the team. So flying duck is is you know like yeah. the duck. 2.0 so he's flying he's looking <laughs> at the sky and and he want to fly high and he want to achieve uh, really good things love it and it's love a more inspiring and positive um name yeah very very good yeah. plus also and this is <laughs> not a joke i live in a town that they have the duck race and they have ducks everywhere so <laughs> it's a duck thing <laughs> anywhere you go here um in heaven bridge uh, you have ducks um yeah <laughs> <laughs> very good very good so if, if we if we're sat here in um in five years time having another another discussion alex so where, where, where does flying duck need to have got to what would you count as success um, um i will i would like to have uh, a person that deal with sales um a person that uh, deals with uh, production so like a operation team that cover that area um then i would like to have a couple of animators couple of designers um and for me um i would love apart from like running the day activities of the business that that's unavoidable so there is a minimum that i need to keep an eye and approve things but focusing more in researching and the development so that's okay. the part that i i really like so free in my time so have a bigger team not super big but but a bigger team so we can keep growing perfect brilliant well i've really enjoyed talking with alex it's been been fascinating um are you before we close are you all right for a couple of uh quick fire questions yeah yeah great so if you could go back to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? Um, wow. <laughs> um, is fear doesn't take you anywhere. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All yeah. right. 
love it. And you're obviously a big um, a big learner. You know, you talked about the accelerator programs and accessing all the local support. What are there any other resources you'd like to point people in the direction of? Whether they be books, podcasts, um, courses, any anything that you think you'd like to mention to other people? Um, well. Yes, uh, but it depends on the period of my life that you are asking me. So I had a, um, uh, so right now I'm all in into AI research. So it's, it's, it's all about like YouTubers and podcasts and things that they are in that, in that subject. A couple of years ago, it's all about uh, performance and the minds. I love neuroscience. I love uh, philosophy. So uh, from uh, Sam Harris, uh, to you name it. So the yeah. goods and the bads. Uh, how is it? Uh, Peter Jordanson, I think is called. Um, so it's polemic people. I like to listen polemic people. I like to like listen more close uh, um, minded. Uh, yeah, like more, more close to my to my mindset. So, but I would say be curious. Be curious. Yeah. Explore explores because whatever like you like is always going to be quite a lot of like experts uh, yeah. so books uh, podcasts and and youtube so that's basically what i do now yeah. for researching very it's good youtubers very good. podcasts and books <laughs> perfect and any um Obviously, you're in. You know, you're, you're into the into AI. Sorry for interrupting you, but yeah. audiobooks is something that I oh. discovered lately, and is very very useful when you are driving, when you have a long drive ahead, or when you are working and you cannot read a book. Audiobooks yeah. is something really yeah. good. And is there any particular book that sticks in mind that you can can recall? Um, well. Sapiens, but again, it's, oh, it's a little, yeah. yeah. So the uh, Nobel Harari, no, no, Harari. I, I don't remember properly the name. I'm very bad with names. No, Nubal right. Harari, Nubal right. Harari. Okay. Very good. Um, then there is another one that uh, uh, it was making me smile a lot. Is called the Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, yeah. but I've not, I've not read that. Yeah. Yeah. So this. It's like what I do for like inspiring myself and and mindset yeah. is reading a lot of these uh, books that they are good and they work on that my more subconscious level and um, a school of life TED. so those those things I do I do love to reach and and access to inspiring content that makes me feel you know like moving inside and and yeah. Hmm. participate Excellent. in that feeling oh, very very good um and, and are, are there any particular individuals business leaders or people that you that have had a big influence on you uh no particularly um oh. All right. i do like this i don't remember the name there was like a youtube channel i was following for like many years that was bringing a, a lot of like top people in different areas uh, mostly uh, mind, uh, health, tech. Yeah. Um, uh, is is American one? Um, I don't I don't remember okay. the name. I yeah, like B. I I do remember that he was ending all these videos with a very American sentence and accent of like be legendary my friends <laughs> <laughs> well, so well, if someone if you, is listening uh, it's uh, a famous YouTube channel yeah, they, they can, probably yeah yeah they can yeah. put it in the comments or impact or... impact impact uh, something okay well, if, it, if, yeah. if it comes to you you know let me know and we'll put it in the in the, in the show notes yeah uh, but great um, and how do you find your clients you know what's your most successful tactic for finding <clears> clients <throat> So I do have some clients that they are returning clients, uh, making clients happy. That's another successful tactic. Yeah. And then uh, networking. So yeah. all these talks, uh, participating in activities that uh, I saw myself yeah. and I can prove my expertise um, is being the probably the most efficient way, Brilliant. more than 
call, email, uh, and then obviously when you create a lead, you need to nurture, you need to be there. So we write a lot of content, uh, useful content, good advices, and this is a way of like trying to be there for when they need someone like us. Brilliant. Alexei Lobato, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Scallop Radio today. If people would like to get in touch with you, find out more about Flying Duck Studio Lab, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, it will be my email. is alexe at flyingduckstudiolab.co.uk. Um, and then we have a contact form that's uh, in the website that yep. I always uh, check it. But yeah, email probably is the best way. And then LinkedIn by my uh, name, Alexe Lovato. I usually also check it. Great. So we'll put those into the show notes as well. So thank you very much indeed for being my guest today. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And if you're building and scaling your own business, you might well be interested in our book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way. And you can order a copy on all your favorite online retailers, including an audio version, or you can find it and other supporting resources on our website, www.esusgroup.co.uk. That's esusgroup.co.uk, which is E-S-U-S-G-R-O-U-P.co.uk. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.